Kyle here from allmeterviews.blogspot.com. Uh, today, well, okay, on May 17th, 1996, Kevin Matthew Gilbert was found dead in his, I believe it was his apartment, in uh, his part of uh, there who's living in Southern California. Um, so today is May 17th, 2016, so it's been 20 years. Um, I have all these CDs and stuff that I was gonna try to go through. I gotta go to work though, unfortunately, so my time's limited. Um, but I thought I would do something, rather than do a random artist feature exactly on him, which might eventually do. Um, I just would thought about doing the, to borrow a, a, a process or a, a, a concept from Cover Kill Nation quickly and do the whole what if, um, just briefly. I mean, I, maybe we'll do this in a, a larger, more in-depth explanation at some point later on, but the whole what if so-and-so was still alive. So what if Kevin Gilbert was still alive, was he was still around, now 20 years, some 20 years later? Um, toward the end of the time he was uh, around, before he passed away, he was. these are the two things he probably, he most recently did. You know, the shaming of the truth he was working on, uh, and then um, the Caviar Project. So, the Caviar Project is more, is very much a departure from his previous work in a lot of ways. It was very electronic and industrial, and he was listening to a lot of trip-hop music, uh, which was starting to get popular. Based, most of the stuff he was listening to and being influenced by was out of the UK. That's where a lot of the trip-hop stuff of the early and mid-90s was coming from. Um, so in, in 1995, 1996, 1997, he would have been around. I don't know, with Caviar, this, these were just demos. The, this album would have come out, probably, in some various different forms. Um, and then eventually he would have probably finished this, uh, whether it would have been titled The Shaming of the True is uncertain, uh, and how it came out. Uh, for example, on um, one of my favorite songs, maybe my, my favorite song on this record, Image Maker, I don't know if they would have had uh, Nick DiVirgilio do the uh, sort of bridge vocals and everything like that, and some of the extra parts. And Parts of this record might have ended up a little different, but that would have been my guess in 1996, 1997, what he would have done, among other things. Of course, I'm wearing the Genesis hoodie. Kevin had an odd was supposed to be, at least supposedly, had an audition to uh, to uh, become their lead singer. Um, my guess, though, based on everything I've read and heard, is that he would have gotten the audition, um, but I'm not sure he would have actually ended up being the front man. I, I, at one point, I, I totally believed he would have. I uh, would have at least had that, that opportunity for a short while, but based on other things... I'm not sure it would have been best for both Genesis and Kevin Gilbert to be the front man of Genesis. More likely he could have done like a one-off show of some kind or maybe he would have worked with them. He would have produced them or played on their their upcoming record and whether it would have been Ray Wilson or some other names that were floating around that they ended up contacting. I think the chances of that happening would have been about as good, if not better, than actually what did happen with Ray Wilson and Genesis when they recorded their Calling All Stations album, of course, and then toured. Um, but the other thing, I've, uh, of course, was on his plate was he was going to be producing other music, which leads me to my next belief of what would have happened. He was in touch with Mike Portnoy from Dream Theater, and Dream Theater around that time were working on the follow-up to, well, Wake, and then the Change of Seasons EP, of course. My guess, in 1996, he would have worked with Dream Theater, maybe the summer of 1996 or the fall of 1996, and they would have released the follow-up and what became Falling Into Infinity as a just a sort of a counter-reality timeline. My guess is that he would, the album would have come out somewhat different. I think Kevin would have appreciated a lot of the music they were writing and uh, recording, a lot of the music from Falling Into Infinity and the Falling Into Infinity period that they wrote and recorded would have ended up on the record. Uh, I would even think that there's a chance that Metropolis Part 2 would have ended up on uh, the song, not the whole Scenes from Memory thing that happened later, but the, uh, the song titled Metropolis Part 2 would have ended up on 
uh, what the album that was Falling Into Infinity, or they would have called it something else. Uh, and it would have probably ended up as a double album. Kevin would have pushed with whoever they were working with and told Dream Theater, you guys, this is your vision, that you have all this music. Although I think some of the music they wrote would might not have ended up on there because Kevin produced it. Songs like um, You Not Me, it would have been You or Me. Um, I'm not sure about like Hollow Years. Some, it, it really depends, but I, I think songs like uh, uh, Raise the Knife and Speak to Me, Kevin would have appreciated also. Where Are You Now, The Way It Used To Be. Some of those songs would have ended up on there, and it would have ended up as a double, including The Metropolis Part Two, and it would have come out in 1997 still, I think. That is just one guess. Um, of course, at that time, he was also still doing production work with um, other bands and, and movie and film scores. He was scoring uh, television shows. He would have done more television and more movies. Um, and so you'd have seen him have somewhat of a, you know, more more uh, prolific uh, uh, career in doing movies and um, film scores. And it would have led to some other things later in the 90s and in the early 2000s. The other thing that I think that would have potentially happened is he would have worked with Mike Portnoy. After working with Dream Theater uh, in 1996 on their, their follow-up record, which became Fallen Into Infinity, or another title... He would have ended up wanting to work with with Dream the or with Mike Portnoy because Mike Portnoy appreciated his work, especially Toy Matinee, and he also knew and worked with Spock's beard. So I think Mike Portnoy, Kevin Gilbert, and Neil Morse of Spock's beard would have ended up working together. Um, those three, and possibly Peter Ross, and that would have been Transatlantic. I don't think I don't know who would have been the lead guitarist though. That's the only thing. They might have still had Ronan Stolt. They might have had Jim Matheos. Jim Matheos might have been in that group, so and they would have called it something else than Transatlantic, maybe. Um, and the music would have been somewhat like Transatlantic, but it also would have been different. I think it would have there would have been more shorter songs. There would have been um, more goofy songs. There would have been more humor to Transatlantic than there was actually, or whatever you want to call it, Second Nature or something like that. So by the early 2000s, you'd have Kevin Gilbert's doing a lot of stuff still underground. His pursuit at the mainstream would have been even less so than he had been. Um, I don't know what soundtracks he would have done, but um, the one one musician that I kind of see as having a similar kind of time frame and career path from that period on till, till today in 2016 is Matt Mahaffey from Self. So I think Kevin Gilbert's career at, by the point of 2016 would resemble Matt Mahaffey of Self to a point. He would have been more active than Matt Mahaffey in the last decade but as a musician and producer. But he would have still done film scores. He would have probably done his own thing. He might have written a book or two because he was very much a literature guy, very much a reader. Uh, and he probably, he may not have continued to live in Southern California. I could have seen Kevin moved somewhere away, maybe back to New Jersey or somewhere out east. Uh, where he could have just sort of been in isolation and gotten away from the whole Hollywood lifestyle, which sort of he had a love-hate relationship with. Uh, he would have been very political. Very, he had a very political stance about a lot of things. He probably would have appreciated uh, electing Barack Obama as president. Um, right now in 2016 with our election, I'm sure, I'm guessing he would not support Donald Trump. He probably would be supporting Bernie Sanders, just as a guess. Uh, I'm not sure he would have, he would have been divided on Hillary Clinton. He supported Bill Clinton, but uh, the way things have gone, uh, he was very much of a left-thinking person, although that was when he was younger. He'd be, his 50th birthday would be in November of this year, so. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think he would have done more things musically besides what he had done. I think he would have done maybe some classical music, because he was classically trained. He would have, um, maybe he would have dove into other kinds of concept albums. Uh, he would have done a pure power pop album. He might have even gone into metal at some point, or he would have produced metal bands, because uh, he was even doing some of that kind of stuff or looking to it back in, in the early to mid-90s when he was around. So what if Kevin Gilbert was still around? That would be my guess. Uh, would have he released anything at this epic level? Maybe. I think he could have potentially released something even better than this. Than the shaming is true, but uh, that's just speculation. But that's just based on observations, and everything. My sort of <laughs> fantasized uh, alternate reality of Kevin Gilbert had died on May 17th, 1996. Uh, at some point, I might elaborate on some of these ideas, but that's my take for now. 
Uh, it's Kevin Gilbert's 20th anniversary of his death uh, today on May 17th, 2016. If you have any Kevin Gilbert to listen to, I'd recommend it. Or if you've never heard his music, go to go on to YouTube, go to his website, go to whatever other site, sites you can to find his music, and definitely check it out because it's kind of a, a milestone day for uh, us Kevin Gilbert fans. Thanks. Goodbye. <laughs>